Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here, the Zodak Cup Masters Southeast Asian Region qualifying action coming at you. And what surely should be a great best out of three here, a semi-final matchup, of course. Looking forward to this one. Hopefully you guys are. Welcome to the broadcast. And Illuminous was just casting right here. Definitely I uh, was listening in myself and uh, excited to hear the uh, Mineski finish right there and how they're moving on now to the semifinals to face Clutch Gamers, who talk about a team that's on a hot streak lately, a team that just recently qualified for the Summit 7 and looking to qualify for the Zodak Cup now, a team that is definitely becoming a name to recognize in the Southeast Asian scene at least. With all that said, I am Breaky CPK, your new caster here. I'm going to be joined by my co-caster, PQMC. How's it going, man? Ten seconds remaining. Pretty good, thanks. Yourself? It's early. It's early for me, but uh, I'm excited to be here. I definitely uh, looking for. I don't get the chance to cast much Southeast Asian Dota, so I really am excited to be here. Uh, and I know you, yourself. I don't think uh, you're maybe too familiar with the scene either, so it's kind of a new experience for both of us here. Yeah, a lot of my casts recently have been SCA though, so I'm getting a bit more familiar with it. It's much crazier scene than like Europe, China. They make a lot more funny plays happen. It's very entertaining. Yeah. I, I, I definitely agree there for, for the little bits and pieces I, I have seen, most certainly. But So, I mean, yeah, these two teams we were mentioning, Mineski, of course, most noticeably, uh, they picked up Mushi here in this quote-unquote offseason of sorts from Fnatic. Uh, definitely the big name. He's their drafter, after all. And uh, I also recognize the name over here, Ninja Boogie, a name that uh, I haven't seen in a long time. But uh, personally, you know, coming from the Han scene, he actually is a way back win former player. So it's fun to see him again. Uh but then as I was also talking about, Clutch Gamers, you were doing a little bit of research yourself. Not only did they qualify for some set, but this team's on a tear. They're, they're just winning series left and right. So you think they're the favorites here? I don't know if I'd go as far as favorites, just because I haven't seen the team play myself. But remaining. their record say, says they're pretty good. So Five it should be a very, very remaining. close series. After watching Mineski play the um, previous series, at least the last two Reserve games, time. Uh, they look like they're playing pretty well. Yeah. They don't have Alina this time, though, which is Mushi's like, go-to at the moment. I suppose we can start talking about the draft now. <laughs> we got Earth Spirit Axe, uh, the picks actually for Mineski. Rubik and Weaver, the picks for Clutch Gamers over here. But, yeah, no Lena, the, the maybe go-to for Mushi, but understandably banned by Clutch Gamers. So what of the draft so far, though? An Axe early on in the draft. I'd say it's all kind of as I'd expect it to pan out. The bans make a lot of sense. One of the most successful heroes I've seen on that page was the Invoker for Clutch. And the guy seems to always go massively positive with the hero. And Gabby also likes his Weaver. Weaver. Uh, I like the Axe. Uh, when played it really well last game. Oh, wait, no. Was it last game? I couldn't. Say. One of the games in the last series, I saw him play Axe. But you know, went really well on the hero. Okay. Well, we got the following bands happening now, and here comes the third Radiant pick now for Clutch. So again, they got the the slippery core that is the Weaver. Again, the and I say core, you know, th there there was a time there for a little bit where we saw a possible support Weaver, but I, I don't think I've seen a support Weaver in a in a good chunk of time now. So it's just we're gonna have a Weaver. It feels like back to that Ten core and the, the no radio. boots core even. That's <laughs> what I am familiar with at least. So almost wonder if we're gonna see that here. But Sand King, the third pick for Clutch Gamers, they get some crowd control and I guess more than likely a four position, but uh, has history at off lane. So we'll see where he ends up here. So mostly be running remaining. as an offlaner from what I've seen. It's a really Five nice hero to remaining. set the tempo of the game. Very low cooldown initiation. It's very aloof in team fights as well, so you can very easily get multiple jumps Radiant in. And with a hero like Weaver, it synergizes quite nicely. Mm -hmm. You see Dazzle on the other side. That's that's kind of a fun combo to see. Usually, you know, the Dazzle and the Axe, the idea of even the, the whole lane cutting, the creep cutting there in the early laning phase is now potential. Remaining. So is that something that Mineski perhaps is aiming for, you think? Or is this just, Five like, that's not remaining. really something people do nowadays? It's definitely not something people do regularly, but uh, it's an option they have if they really want to um, exploit something that Clutch do. Mm -hmm. If the lanes go 
as you'd expect them to, where Weaver goes safe lane with the Rubik and they pick up another support that's able to fight them early. I very much doubt they'll do anything along those lines. Chances are Axe will be forced to the jungle pretty early if they don't put a lot of pressure on that. Sorry, if they don't help him deal with the early pressure. Mm -hmm. And that's all the better heroes at doing that, but we shall see how they prioritize. We shall, as dipping back over to Clutch Gamers now in their fourth pick. So, yeah, that will be quite the yeah, – talk about quite the momentum as team kind of all of a sudden it feels like. You know, Southeast Asia has really been developing as a scene, I feel like, over this last uh, – and again, ever since I've really come in in the last nine months here or so, um, we've seen kind of the dominant teams, that being Faceless and then TNC rose quite a bit. Uh, you have teams like Mineski that's always been somewhat relevant, but now with the pickup of Mushi is definitely even that much more, you could argue. Uh, but this Clutch Gamers is now making quite the show, so I'm um, looking to qualify for their second lane in a row. And you talk about just uh, so much momentum that they're having, and they're going to try to continue that with a Timbersaw now with their fourth pick, actually. So, all right, so Timbersaw, you were mentioning the idea of possible Sand King off lane, but does that now change things, you think? Five seconds remaining. Uh, I assume so. The chances of uh, Sand King being a cog just got a time. lot lower. <laughs> Timber's really nice here, though. The amount of control for the hero is it's okay, but they don't really have a way to kill him. Yeah. As of yet. I mean, they don't have their cores, but I really like how Clutch are going about this. Their draft has a lot of room to play at multiple stages of the game. There's a lot of outplay scenarios as well, just because their cores and Sand King are very... Seeker. Mobile in team fights, but this is the hero that uh, says screw you to mobility. It's very very volatile though. In a way, is that maybe you were just mentioning how they don't really have the best way to deal with Timbersaw? Now they kind of do, right? The silence you got his also ultimate on top of that, uh, the rupture, which potentially could be pretty powerful against a Timbersaw, I would think. Five seconds. I feel remaining. like it's a. Uh, it goes both ways. Because Timber's one of those heroes that's generally pretty tanky. Reserve and if he has time. a good start, and he's one of the better heroes at dealing with weaker laning carriers, you can very easily bully a Bloodseeker. So if you get a good start, you get a Blade Mill, he ruptures, you can kill himself in team fights, and you're kind of running away on like 100 health. It's generally pretty beneficial. Yeah. That being said, if the Bloodseeker gets a good early game, I, I like the pick. The Dazzle allows the hero to play a lot more aggressively as well. And I think it fixes some of their issues. Bloodseeker, I guess, has potential to be ran in maybe a couple of different roles. Is where is this a mid Bloodseeker here? Most likely safe lane, I assume. So you think safe lane, okay. Dire team ban. Just because it's uh, while Timber can bully you, he normally needs like a secondary hero like the Sand King to be there constantly. But Bloodseeker can sustain better than most heroes. Yeah. It's just a matter of um, Ten the hero actually remaining. getting something out of the lane and then prospering, or if he's just there as a Five kind of sacrifice. Remaining. If they completely sack the hero, I think they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Okay. Reserve time. Well, we're going to see a Quap ban coming out from Clutch Gamers. Uh, you know, I like I said, I haven't really been casting a whole lot of Southeast Asia lately. It's, it really is something to kind of see the, the difference between picks and bans even from scene to scene. I've been seconds, covering maybe. a bit of the, the European region, of course, lately, even some Chinese Dota. But, you know, you see some bans like, like the Quap, which has been such a long time since I've seen. I feel like the Timber Saw even pick up on top of that. Haven't Radiant seen that for a while. Team. But I guess, you know, the regions tend to be a little bit different with who they prioritize. And a case here, Templar Assassin. Going to be happening with the fifth and final pick from Mineski as their actual mid option. So they get some nice uh, amplified physical damage, no doubt, to finish Ten things off. Remaining. Yeah, there's very few ways to break through reflection on Clutch. So remaining. one of Mushi's preferred heroes. Makes them a very run at you tempo based Reserve lineup, though. Time. I think if their game starts really well, it's going to be really hard for Clutch to stop them. Mm -hmm. That being said, their fallback plan is kind of uh, non-existent. You think for Mineski, their fallback plan? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it just feels like as soon as their cores get behind, they're very fight-based. They're going to have a lot of room on the map to farm. I, I suppose TA is always going to find somewhere, but these heroes don't thrive when they're 
put on their high ground and they're defending or they're on the back foot. They want to be in your face, causing you a lot of trouble. So the laning stage will be the most important point. And Cloak's lanes aren't bad. All of the heroes can uh, accomplish things early. The sniper's one of the better heroes that was available to deal with the TA, at least in the laning stage. And I think there's a thought they're going to be able to move around a bit more. Their claws seem a bit more self-sufficient. You mentioned the sniper good at dealing with the TA in the laning phase. Is, is that because of the shrapnel, really, as it tends to be with such a hero, you know, for, against a refraction, or what, what's the idea there? Uh, on top of the range, yeah. It's just a way to take the refraction off and spam the creep wave out. And you're normally not in line for side blades as much as other heroes, or at least in my experience. So it's yeah, also true. just a hero that you don't really care if you get ruptured as sniper. <laughs> That's if, fair. If they're, if they're on top of you already, sure you could hurricane pipe away, but chances are you're already screwed if they're on top of you. If they rupture you and try to chase you and the rest of your team have time to react, you can just stand, fight, do your stuff. They do have a lot of um, priority targets for rupture though. So all of the cores are going to be very relevant in team fights. So taking a look at who's playing what, of course it will be Mushi on that TA here. On the side of Mineski. So looking forward to seeing how he does in that matchup as you suggest. Uh, perhaps Sniper having the advantage right there, but Mushi with that experience. And with uh, some possible rotations of said Earth Spirit, who can usually be pretty damn annoying, especially babysitting in that middle lane. So something to, to look out for. but. It's like a little bit of movement here early on in the game from uh, Mineski especially as far as what they want to do. They're all going to kind of gather up around the middle lane right here, almost as if they're going to wait for information to come out. They did get a ward down very aggressively in the Radiant Jungle to start things. They're going to see the Timber Salt down here, and I think that may cause some changes here to battle. because of that. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely reacting to Clutch switching up the lanes, which I think was fairly smart. Timber in the safe lane does more than well against Axe. Axe probably gets slightly more out of the lane, but if a kill goes either way, it's probably in Timbersaw's favor. And their aggro lane is very, very strong at shutting down Bloodseeker. It also lets the SK roam into mid a lot more freely. So Mineski scouting this early is going to make their early game a lot less painful. Mm -hmm. Having to play musical lanes for the first 70 seconds of the game is not fun. Puts you a lot further behind. Yeah, it shows, the paying off. exactly. It shows you how important it is to, you know, we see those, the teams constantly using the smoke C fan or the, the, using the, the, the TPs to get their ASAP and get those wards down, and this is exactly why, you know, to get that information and now make the adjustments accordingly. And on top of that, they also counter ward here at the bottom lane uh, to take away the vision of Timbersaw. So all of a sudden, Timbersaw, he's quite blind. He's going to go up against three heroes. He doesn't have his ability just yet. Um, you know, being level one, we'll see what he decides to get. He does get the timber chain, gonna help him get away initially, and yeah, he will be fine, but clearly, this is gonna be a tough start, especially with no reactive armor now at level one here. So it seems like Mineski already liking the situation. Yeah, at the very least for Timber, he's in his safe lane, so it's a lot easier than... I suppose not having the shrine actually makes a big deal, but he should be able to get his levels. If he's not, then the Earth Spirit's committing all the time here, and Sniper should get a good enough advantage in the mid lane. Yeah, that's, of course, yeah, whenever you're committing so much to one lane, you figure there's going to be a sacrifice elsewhere, like you're suggesting. Uh, perhaps the Sniper is going to get a great start now because of this. Although, something tells me, I mean, Earth Spirit, yeah, I, I would doubt he's going to spend all the time down here necessarily. Uh, just sitting he's on He's probably going to back off when, like, Timber gets level 2 or 3, but right now, keeping him level 1 and with where the lane's positioned and how it's pushing, there's no reason for him to move. It makes very little impact if he goes mid, if he doesn't net a kill, and then Timber gets level 2 off of it. This is much safer play. That, that being said, the um, when they pick the sniper, it's not necessarily who's going to win the lane against TA, but it does better than most of the options that were like available. Yeah. They'd already taken out the banner, which I'll was the go-to, like, SEA mid laner at the moment. Oh, middle lane. Sniper's in trouble right here. First blood potential. That's going to be Mushi 
picks it up right there in favor of Maneski. You see Fly Solo porting in on Rubik, but simply could not get there in time. That was a very good run from Earth Spirit, and it's exactly what we're talking about, what we see so often with this hero, putting pressure in that middle lane. So not only the pressure on Timbersaw bottom, but the rotation eventually happens as expected, and they get the blood or the first blood even <laughs> in the middle lane here. So that's what Maneski needed. Yeah, and the more they get us out, the better they're going to be. It feels like they should have um, reacted to that slightly better on Clutch's side. The Earth Spirit not showing bottom for that long should be like a clear tell for him to either have backup to play the way he did or be a lot more safe in his positioning. Oh, again. The double damage on top of that. No chance for Sniper to get out. Well played right there from Adam, but it is going to come at a cost this time around. Good port in coming out from the Sand King, actually. At least he able to get the turn kill and set up the first kill of the game in favor of Clutch Gamers. But still, Mushi now, he is looking pretty damn good. Not only that CS kind of picking out, but especially the net worth overall, having those uh, two kills, both of them going in his favor, actually. Top it this up is going to go really quickly. Like, Timber still has no CS. He can't even go bottom. He's resorted to jungling, which is the last thing you want to see this hero doing when you give him a safe lane. And they don't really have a way of dealing with this axe top. Sure, Weaver's getting basically free farm, but the supports can't do anything to this axe. They don't have kill potential as much as um, Mineski do in the other lanes. And because their supports have basically just been sat off, and they got so heavily punished with the Earthspirit connecting the two kills, that now they're playing like completely reactionary. Yeah. They need to find a way to start setting the tempo with these two supports. But it might be too little, too late. Because the amount of vision Maneski have is godly right now. Meanwhile, top lane, they do get the kill on Axe. So, as you're suge suggesting, they don't necessarily have the best way to deal with them. Unfortunately, I thought the same, and so I wasn't having my camera up there. Poor camera work by me. Apologize. But anyways, Axe uh, going down uh, at that top lane. So obviously a nice step up there for Clutch Gamers. But yeah, even with that kill on him, I mean, he's level 4. Timbersaw's still level 2. Almost level 3 right here, but clearly behind when it comes to uh, what's going on with each of these lanes. But now Sand King finds himself at the bottom lane. Bloodseeker's running in, but, yeah, I mean, he's not scared. He has Dazzle to support and still a level 2 Timbersaw on top of that. So, man, this Bloodseeker, by the way, 31 and 26. <laughs> he is absolutely dominating when it comes to CS, and he already has those face boots finished on top of the poor man shield. But focusing on Bloodseeker, again, not a hero we see often. What's, what's the build here? What do you expect to see as far as items go? The builds that people used to run were kind of like SNY, Silver Edge. I could see Silver Edge being pretty good this game. Uh, Blade Mills probably on its list as well. There's a lot of hard to it, uh, uncontrollable damage that you can deal with. And having a Dazzle with the Grave would net you a few easy kills. Silver Edge does <laughs> seem pretty powerful in general against a Timber so. Yeah, there's a lot of ways he could go this game. I'd probably look for um, some small stat-based item to start with, and then go into the blade mill. So maybe just like a kilo blade mill, drum blade mill, something along those lines. Yeah. God, he is just—he's not afraid to run out the timber saw and take some tower damage. Of course, you know, with that uh, with that thirst of his, and uh, heal on the blood no, rage damage. Such an easy up. game for him, though. Yeah. It's all because of how they set the lanes up. They're playing to their strengths. And Clutch really haven't reacted in any kind of way up until this smoke attempt. And this will be really, really big if it hits. Feels like it should. I mean, they're, they're definitely getting prime position to go on this Bloodseeker. Out comes the Timber Chain. The lift in the air. Dazzle is here. No shallow grave in time, though. Couldn't get close enough. And react. Bloodseeker will fall. And now Dazzle's also in a lot of trouble. Another burst strike in three seconds. I mean, he's going down here. Just going to make it take as long as possible, he says. Try to go for the turn kill. That ain't going to work, though. He'll fall in. So that smoke ink definitely works out for Clutch Gamers. Exactly what they needed. Just as we're praising the, su su wow, the success of Bloodseeker at this bottom lane here. So good rotation from Clutch. Yeah, this is tending to be like the time in the game where uh, being in that off lane as uh, one position gets risky. Going back down here makes sense, I suppose, Radiance though, because of how successful he's been. Attack. And the axe is getting a lot more out of the safe lane than he would on the off lane. Mm -hmm. He'd basically just have to uh, like, go jungle, I think. 
Timber could probably zone him out at this point. You know, he's back to level 5 now, so... Timber's game has been salvaged with that gang. But now with Helmen Eskia, like, just feeding the farm with this TA having a triple, quad, and gets a quad, yeah. ancients. This is uh, going to put them really, really far ahead on the network, and the Aspirate gets to soak up the experience mid. Dyer's top is under attack. And Clutch aren't doing anything about it. Like, they have really good heroes to invade, but I don't think they understand what's going on right now. No. They think they're, like, playing bottom, and the Weaver's pushing the tower top, but I don't think this is a good trade for them at all. They obviously have no idea what's going on. Blood, bottom lane, Rupture going off, by the way, on a Timber Saw. He used that Timber Trade to try to get away, but of course can only go so far. Shallow Grave on an Earth Spirit to keep him alive as well, and they do take out Timber Saw in the end. So do not allow for the turn kill. Good use right there. No TP reaction either. And I mean, if TPs came in immediately, perhaps they could have made a play, but now they eventually do scout out the TA as you were mentioning. He got a couple of the kills here, but still some of the bigger ancients actually do manage to stay up and they may possibly be able to steal this in the end. So it's going to be interesting to see how Clutch Gamers reacts to this now. Having this information, Sniper is coming over. The dire side will scan out the area. They notice they're here. Shrapnel coming out on the jungle camp at Axe. He doesn't want to give it up freely, and they're running over as a team. So a very possible fight at the objectives over here. They should favor Clutch, though, if they take a fight away from the Shrine. But uh, they don't want to overstay their welcome, which is fair. The fact that TA didn't get to finish like the big creeps is... Uh, a uh, big win for them. They attack. get the tier 1 tower and they're setting dominance in the map. Top lane Axe. Gonna throw the Berserker's call and actually just TP immediately. I mean, he had Dazzle porting in. I almost feel like he didn't even necessarily need to do that, but again, he was doing it basically as the TP started happening, so... Uh, figured, uh, might as well continue with it and get back and regen. But TA does eventually make his way back to the Ancients. So Mushi reacts in time, goes back to the Ancients, and he's gonna finish this off. He's gonna hit level 9. And he has another 1,000 gold saved off that net worth. Understandably, now just jumps up there. But Weaver actually is also doing a very good job. He cannot overlook Gabby here on the Weaver. Already has that Dragon Lance and the Ring of Health on him. Yeah, the, the hero kill and the tower kill making the net worth look almost comparable. is really impressive when the TAs had like a, a decent lane, a few kills, and the Ancients. But this is kind of the nature of uh, TA. She ramps up when she hits the jungle. You know, Can I imagine Blink first this game? Yeah. Oh man, Earth Spirit. <laughs> That's a, he wants to take that back quickly. He's like, yeah, I did not expect this many people to be here. All of a sudden, Rubik and Sand King show up, and he's dead. So, very uh, ambitious okay. role in there. Ends up biting him in he's the just ass. an Earth Spirit. It kind of sucks that that happens, though, because uh, he's level 4. If he doesn't start getting levels pretty soon, he's going to feel a lot lower impact than he would like. Yeah. And with how the game is progressing at the moment, Mineskia kind of only getting farm on their cores, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because their cores are very good if they're steroided. But it's going to create an issue if they make one or two bad plays and Clutch have like five relevant heroes as opposed to Mineski having two or three. Oh, here we go. Going on a Weaver. The Rupture comes out. He does have time lapse. There's a size to the Boulder Smash done. Not going to connect, but another size to follow. And down goes the Weaver. That's exactly, again, what Mineski needs to do. It feels like these teams are playing fairly on point as far as what they quote unquote need to be doing and stopping the Weaver right now and slowing him down. And so now you have these uh, these early snowballish cores of the TA and the Bloodseeker both looking really good. Bloodseeker, by the way, he chose to go the hand of Midas on top of that. So he's going to amp even more with this farm while assisting in kills in the process. Yeah, this is uh, something I didn't list as an option, but it was also quite common. I like the extra levels on the hero a lot. You don't get as many levels from Midas now, which I, I think is a shame because... The item was more based around the experience and the gold, but I can understand the necessary balanced reasons. Okay, I want to touch on that real quickly because I don't know about you, but I, Hannah Midas, with that change, I think the idea was maybe to nerf it, but we've seen the Hannah Midas a lot in a lot of the matches that I've been covering at least. So, you know, seeing it here on Bloodseeker, no surprise. It, has that been a trend that you've noticed with uh, even the changes happening? Or okay, hold that thought actually, because Axe actually at the top lane. He's trying to escape this whole time, and he probably is going to be fine, actually. They go the wrong direction, and, yeah, he's going to TP out, so he'll be fine. But, yeah, what, what do you think of that? Is that something that you've been noticing, or maybe not as much? 
Uh, I feel like the item's just very relevant based on how the game's played right now. You There's a lot less farm on the map like consistently, so you want to be using the downtime to fight, and Midas helps you keep up so much. And like finding this TA here is, uh, should be pretty huge for them. Yeah, if they can secure the kill, and looks like they definitely will. No assassinate even needed, just simply run him down, the shrapnel slowing him enough, and no chance for him to get out of there, so... Nice, okay, nice counter kill coming up for Clutch, and they keep the kill lead actually six to four now, in their favor. So, and Mushi did definitely not expect them to have like any vision on him or be able to kill him there with the blink. I, I liked how he played with the blink, but he got punished pretty heavily. Yeah. Yeah, that that blink on the TA, especially with these early levels. I mean, it's understandable. That's why you get the blink, you know, to really get in there for these kills earlier on in the game, but obviously, again, as you pointed out, just simply the farm. did not expect the vision. Yeah, it does. They, they can't catch you right now with uh, a blink unless they come from an angle where you're really near the fog that Sun King can initiate or Rubik can initiate, which is quite unlikely. Just based on like how quickly people can move at this stage of the game and how close the map is as opposed to like 20, 30 minutes from now. Mm -hmm. To recap, yeah, it's definitely. Go ahead. Sorry, go. Uh, Mushi definitely just didn't expect to be getting caught with a blink. So to recap, guys, as we're coming out of the pause right here, um, this is a, our first of two semifinals coming at you. This is Mineski versus Clutch Gamers. Uh, the winner of this goes to the finals, and then of course our other semifinal matchup. Uh, it's going to be Fnatic versus Warriors Gaming Unity. So looking forward to this one here. Definitely some great matchups uh, to finish off the day here. The Zodiac Cup Masters coverage. Bottom lane, though, Adam. He gets initiated on initially, but they're going to turn this on a Weaver. At least try to. The Rapture use, but there's a time lapse. And now we find a Bloodseeker actually trying to survive here. Another Burl Strike, though, but here comes Dazzle. Shallow Grave going to be applied. All of a sudden, now Sand King's like, ah, crap. I got to run here. Timber saw me while getting a kill the top lane. On to Axe while this is happening. He gets the last hit on the Bloodseeker on a Sand King, though. He goes up a little bit, and now we see Gabby trying to finish it off and take advantage of this overall fight, and the Swarm goes out. Oh, not enough damage, though, initially. Bloodseeker, good use of the Magic Stick right there. He kills the Pug, but the final auto attack comes out, and down he falls. So he did his darnest to survive right there, but in the long run, Gabby has the best of it on that Weaver. Yeah, considering he... Um let the Bloodseeker get the turn kill there when he didn't move with Rupture. It went a lot better than I expected. And killing the Axe on the other side of the map is almost more important than what happened bottom. Because this hero is uh, still without a blink. And I feel like Mineski really need this hero to start setting the tempo of the game. M Mushi's at a point where okay. he's happy to fight. He just doesn't have someone to enable him yet. And the Bloodseeker is a very fight-happy hero, but he can't put his team on his back at the moment because he has very farm-based items. He needs someone to go in for him. And until the Axe gets a blink, they're going to have a lot more trouble doing that. And I, I think it's giving Clutch way more time than they should have had. So they like, get their cores to a point where they can survive the initiations and maybe start turning. Yeah. Oh, well, they're going to try to make a play right here. Tank, you know. Middle lane, smoking no around. Vision, though. Like, they're just kind of yellow smoking. Feels very risky. Uh, I mean, they have a read. But... There we go, the blood right. And he's going to TP immediately, and it's going to work. Oh, what a play by Sniper right there. The reaction. Here comes a TP support, and they're going to take out Bloodseeker, and they want more damage. Dazzle also in trouble. Urspirit gets caught out. And now Dazzle, shallow grave, but again, delaying the inevitable right here. He too is going to fall. What a decision right there by Sniper to just TP immediately. And know that they wouldn't have the stuns, or at least just hope that they would. I mean, you look at this team, they they are, you know, they, they don't have the greatest crocs necessarily, especially without that blink axe yet, as you're just getting at. It's a huge turn, a three for nothing, and a mid-tower kill to top it off here for Clutch Gamers. Yeah, that was um, really, really good heads up on his part, but you could see Mineski were very unsure how they wanted to play that. Courier Once the sniper TP'd out after our spirit used a stun to initiate, they were kind of like, oh shit, we have no idea what's happening here. And then Clutch TP in with like the shrine and the tier one. And... The twins. Was that three for nil, four for nil? Three for nothing, yeah. yeah. And the tower, it's like, now they're completely back on path. 
The cause is still a tiny bit behind at the top, but it's very minimal considering the Midas and just natural TA advantage units. But like, Sniper and Weaver do not farm anywhere near as quickly as either of these heroes, and being comparable on net worth is a win. Oof. That would have been does have his blink now. Yeah. So maybe they can look towards making a play like that again and have a bit more success. They've got a lot of vision around this mid lane, but it's not necessarily useful right now. I do think they know that Axe does have his blink. I don't know if they 100% saw him or not, but they, 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 they knew that he was in the area at the bottom lane as he was trying to get away right there. So something tells me they might have seen him here with the, uh, with You'd the blink. You'd expect it at this time. That too, yeah. If you don't have a blink at 17 minutes, it's kind of like, what the hell? What are you doing? Weaver, what's he doing? He's getting away right here from this middle gank, and he almost walked in their direction, and then he turns around, <laughs> and he goes towards the Ancients, actually. And he'll be okay. fine. It's just that no one's showing on the map right now, so the coach get the very clear tell. Mineski are looking for a play. They just play super defensively if you look where all the heroes are positioned. And they know they're pretty safe. Yeah. Or at least they think so, and they are correct. All the meanwhile, Timbersaw, man, he's he's working on the Bloodstone. He's, he, he, this is a very rough start for him, but he's just about level 12. The the Bloodstone well in the works right here. He's he's recovered quite a bit. Yeah, he's found a lot of space with um, the focus being put on the other side of the map to wherever he was. And it's the same for like the entire team, really. They're just finding a lot of space right now, and Maneski are going for very easily scoutable things. It feels like. And if they're not doing a play with like a four hero smoke, then their two cores are just farming. Yeah. And if Koch see that with uh, any of their vision, they also had some TA traps, which is really, really nice to find out when Mineski have certain heroes at certain camps. I, I thought they went away once you uh, stole a different spell, but apparently they don't. So those are going to stay there for like almost the entire game. Haste. So how's that information here? And <clears throat> you see Mushi wrotes it into the top lane and actually goes to the middle. Oh my god, nearly one shots the Rubik with that new Desolator Fist. He is going to eventually kill him off. As able to run him down right there. Nice blood rain coming out as well, just to make sure to silence the Timbersaw. They also put the Rob shot. In comes the Taunt from Win. As far as the Berserker's call going off, the Coaling Blade not going to happen in time though. He gets cut down by the Timbersaw before he can do enough. And Timbersaw will live despite that rupture. Now they're going to run down Mushi. Oh, ho, but the Refraction. Allows him to blink away in time, so at least they, they have minimal casualties right there, but one for one, Axe, he continues to just really not have much of an impact this game. Dying right there, trying to follow up on Timbersaw. Yeah, he's just had, like, abysmal luck, it feels like. His team's not prioritized him that much, and when he has gotten in space, it... His team fight like, smoke behind a tier one and died and made it so that any space he was getting is like irrelevant. And the same thing there where they go for that play mid. The Dazzle's not there. They're not like fight ready. This is a very important hero for this stage of the game if they want to dive tier ones. And sure Mushi with the haste room just made the best of the situation and his team probably reacted to that. But it, they don't really feel clean at the moment. No. And, and Clutch are, it just feels easier for them. Dyer's bottom tower is under it feels like the classic case of one team getting ahead in the laning phase and, you know, individually pretty skilled. But, yeah, Clutch Gamers is playing very good as a team. And you see right here, Arma with the rupture. He runs out of the blood, right? He has a team reaction nearby. In comes the epicenter as well in return. Bloodseeker going to survive, though. Big shallow grave going off. They get the kill on a sniper. Can Bloodseeker live through this? Probably not. He's going to end up falling. The Magnetize is out, though. And when is here with the Berserker's Call, the Colding Blade finally gets a kill. This one onto the Sand King, but it's going to come at a cost, making it a two for two in the big picture. Oh, maybe a two for three, actually. Down goes Weaver, who got caught in the front lines. He had his time lapse up, but he couldn't get it off there as the crowd control was too strong, and TA wants more, damn it. Fly solo. Going to be a dead solo right here, most likely, as TA's running him down with the traps. Couple of auto attacks, and there we go. Double kill for Mushi to finish the job. So finally, something positive for Mineski as far as these fights coming out. Uh, that was a really, really important fight at this stage of the game for them. It would have been fine, I think, if the Weaver just fought with his team instead of uh, taking on like the free heroes by the tier one. 
obviously easier to criticize with hindsight, but that kind of gave Mineski the window to chase and like round out the fight. And now Mushi's got a 3k net worth lead. Basically all in his inventory. I wouldn't be surprised if he just gets like a BKB and looks to use this as a, a way to carry his team through the next one or two fights. Yeah. Because this is their stage of the game. They play the best at this kind of point, and the more they can snowball, the better they're. Success. Not so fast. Yeah, so he gets the shallow grave off in time, but again, probably gonna die shortly after. Just another case of just simply delaying, if anything. So they find him rotating through the jungle. He had a couple supports nearby, but he basically was playing the bait there in the end of getting information. And well, he found it. Ends up in his death though, as uh, he was it's caught out there. Radiance Middle Tower is under much better the dazzle than honestly any other hero. Even Earthspread at this point is going to get to a point where he wants his blink. It's going to make a lot easier fight execution for them. There's a lot of weight on his shoulders as well. Like he can find the Sand King or like initiate and makes a lot of uh, plays that are available. Yeah. <clears throat> kind of surprised Mushi hasn't spent his money though. Maybe he's thinking if he can get the Aegis, he can go BTP and go for a bigger item, like maybe a Bloodborne or wow. just a straight crit. All right, 4,200 gold he's sitting on. Meanwhile, Axial find the Sand King over here. Sandstorm's not going to save him. Nice blood right follow up. But they're really diving for this. And meanwhile, Chakram in the Roshan pit. Mushi's going to hide in that meld. So it'll stall the Roshan for the time being. And I don't think they know they have TA traps on. Oh, well, Rubik had TA traps. Oh, that's a good point, actually. <laughs> Timber saw. Yeah, he's going to be able to Timber chain away. Takes a good chunk of damage right there. But they also catch the Sniper out. Mainly the Earth Spirit there, and able to secure the kill on him. So now that should really open up an opportunity to I finish think off Roshan. the CA traps the smoke as well. They might know. Oh, Weaver going in. He's going to avoid the Berserker's call. Timber Saw got hit by him, but not the biggest deal. Shot come out of him, and oh, the Shallow Grip at the last second, keeping him alive. Meanwhile, Mushi gets a couple of auto attacks on a Rubik, and that's more than enough damage to finish the job. But again, they they continue to stop this this Roshan. The sniper's up in 18 seconds. He has a buyback, but they would like not to use it, of course. And they may be able to wait this out. I mean, it's going to be so close, though. Another shock room coming out. Definitely, well, it's actually helping them at this point. That's almost awkward. And it's going to happen here any second. So much. Oh, jeez. This would be dead if we're going to There we go. Picks it up. Mushi has the Aegis now. And now if you're the Radiant side, you probably want to fall back. Yeah, the time lapse comes out, and that will be the end of the commitment there. I'll take your Huge win for them. The axe going in so deep, and then the Dazzle being able to cover him just made that everything Mineski wanted. And now Mushi has 5k. The Bloodseek is halfway towards an axe, which... I wasn't so sold on the idea of it, but considering the stage of the game, it makes a lot of sense because he's almost an item ahead, or half an item. And having the extra rupture in fights is going to allow Mushi to connect on heroes a lot more. He yeah, just got BTB whatever. actually, which I'm, I'm kind of surprised. But there is a lot of control on Clutch, so it makes sense. I just thought as he didn't get it for the Roche fight, <laughs> he was looking for a bigger item. So you yeah. generally don't want to combine Aegis and BKB as core. Well. It doesn't feel good. You feel like you want to use the Aegis to get like a bigger item. But yep. this is very likely to win them the next team fight for sure. No matter how clowny their initiation gets, like they don't have a way to deal with an Aegis TA if she's hitting you. If you can somehow run away from her, that's your best hope. But that's on the rest Radiant's of the team. Yeah, so if you oh, can no, somehow run away. But as you talked about now with the axe coming out of Bloodseeker, so we're going to have a couple of charges on that rupture, so good luck running away before that synergy comes into play. So um, it, it is going to be a tough fight Down coming up here for Clutch top Gamers, top but we've said that before, and they've they've had their moments in this game. So although right now, top. again, continues to be the net worth lead in favor of Mineski now in their, in their lead overall. I mean, hell, for the most part of this good, uh, early to mid game, it's actually been leading for Clutch Gamers. But, you know, just recently here, with that Roshan fight dipping in Mineski's favor, but it's not a lot. It's, it still continues to be, you know, somewhat close overall. I mean, you see the top five farmers, three of them are on the side of Clutch, and then it does drop off quite drastically after that, Illusion. as far as the overall. Uh, yeah, the big difference heroes. is the 
three and four for Clutch. The Timber's getting a lot more space on the map than the Axe because Axe is looking to make plays. And then Sun King's also just better at farming than either of Mineski's supports. So that's kind of like a natural thing. But their cores are doing about as well as you could ask, which is what they set the draft up to do. And I think if Clutch can somehow manage to like dodge this Aegis period, which they're going to do a really good job of um, defending the woods with this amount of vision, and then they can just play on the other side of the map. Because right now they do not want to fight unless Mineski go like into a tier 3 or something stupid. If it's any kind of control fight, Mineski are going to dumpster them. Middle lane, ooh. They try to catch the Weaver right there, but he manages to skitter on out. He's got a Defusal Blade Radiant's now picked up. As far as this next item, and he went the, obviously, the uh, Lincolns there, now into the Defusal, and now he has the PKB even queued up, so going to be somewhat fairly defensive. Rupture onto Rubik, that's, is it going to be a kill? Okay, he acts like it's going to TP and it keeps going, and, I mean, he's eventually going to be run down right here, yeah. Such an awkward spot to be in, but obviously got caught out. And similar to the Dazzle situation earlier, though, you know, it's not the biggest deal if you're clutch. Oh, well, Mineski takes a tier 2 bottom, and then they kind of all run, run top. If you can only lose your Rubik in that situation where you, you know for a fact you can't fight, it's really not that bad. Because they don't really have a say on what goes on in the map right now. If they can just stall out, they're happy. Their best hope of... Um, Fighting Mineski is when they get to the, like the tier threes and they can maybe defend the high ground through the spam and the range of the heroes. But until that point, it's all about splitting the map. Yeah. And giving lane. Mineski as little as possible, That's which is hard when you have a TA with Blood Rage hitting your towers. They die pretty quickly. Timber saw. He's trying to distract if anything, but look at TA. He just finished a Hurricane Pike actually in full right there. So this hero is really scaling. 18,000 net worth now on this TA as far as overall net worth goes. You see the next line is his teammate at 14,000 and then Weaver's down there at 13. So a good 5k lead over the opposition core here in this game. So Mushi's definitely done his job so far. Bloodseeker. Similar as well. St. Yash the Yags and that BKB coming along. They're going to protect the bottom lane push. Weaver's going to port out himself before they can go on to him. Sniper chose to get the Shadow Blade, and now he's going to work on finishing a full Mjolnir here. Meanwhile, they might have some catches. They're going to spot a Rubik, but at what cost right here for the dire side? In comes the top from when uh, The Berserker's call catches Weaver. The Lake of Spear popped right there, but now Axe, he's falling quickly. And the BKB pop from TA Owen. The Aegis of Sky Reclaim, that's huge. <laughs> oh, that would have been horrible for Mushi if he got invested right there. But it was a really out. nice idea from Clutch, but with Mineski having the vision around the area and then the Rubik kind of TPing in a, a screen or two ahead of his team. It just wasn't executed as cleanly as it could have been. But they got a kill for two of their supports. Ages down. Mineski can't really capitalize on it at all. They just take a bit more space on the map. Looks much like coming all back at this point is good for Mineski. They, they don't want the map split at all. They also have a gem on the Earth Spirit now, so any vision is uh, short-lived, which is a big problem for them, because that's mostly how they've been avoiding the ganks and positioning the heroes like preemptively based on the vision. Yeah, vision, of course, uh, one of the main reasons you get that gem, but on top of that, it just so happens, you know, the Shadow Blade of Sniper, you got obviously Shikuchi, and you got Sandstorm from Sand King, so ways to be able to see such abilities. Uh, see through even. Not worry about that too much. Weaver's going to spot Axe right here and vice versa, but no play is going to necessarily be made. He's kind of just sitting on top of him, although actually Rubik's coming in, so yeah, they're definitely going in. Axe throws out the He's battle hunger. That's not going to work. They just find him by himself, basically, so. He's kind of a spot at this stage. Yeah. It feels like. Radiant's top tower is under attack. He really is. He's uh, continuing to have the struggle, but you know, he has his blade mill, he has his blink. I guess that's what really is the, the, the big core, especially on the hero, so. Radiant's top yeah, he's done his job, and now it's like, as long as he gets some kind of decent initiation Dyer's fights, they're happy with his uh, Radiant's top contribution. Now the Bloodseeker has a PKB as well. They don't really need Roshan in the picture. 
folk that calls up PKPs, if they can find a fight, they'll be happy. Maybe not fight. like this, though. They found one down here. Not going to get Sniper, though. He ports out in time. They are going to get Rubik here. He's going to go for the TP as well, though, but he will knock it out. But again, minimal casualties. The fact that it's only the Rubik going down and everyone else gets out at the bottom tier 2 tower push is overall good news for Clutch Gamers. Yeah, more time being bought. Weaver's finished his PKB now. I don't think that's going to impact the fights all that much. So if he gets caught by Axe and Mushi's allowed to hit him, he's in a lot of trouble regardless. But if he can manage to delay the game with the rest of his team and get his next item, depending what it is, that's when the hero starts getting really strong. You got Silver Edge coming up next here for the Sniper, by the way. Just means that ultimate orb. Is uh, Silver Edge going to be a big item pickup, you think? As well, actually, maybe initiation up here. They're going to try to catch the Timbersaw. The combo from the Earth Spirit. A nice reaction with the Pearl Strike, though, and the Epicenter going off, but not enough damage initially. However, it sets up for a couple of kills. A Lotus Orb on himself of Timbersaw, but he needs to get away from Mushi Mushi, popping the BKB for this. A two for one, making a three for one. Uh, two for two, excuse me. Yes, yeah, he finds him in the end. Considering they, they don't really lose much on Maneski, they recover their gem. They'll be very happy with that. He, he nearly pulled off a really nice juke. I'd have liked to say I'd have done the same thing, but with when Mushi blinked, he didn't really anticipate the hero running towards the secret shop like you would if you had the vision that you do as a spectator, so. Unfortunate. If he'd have got away there, that would have been absolutely huge. Yeah. That would have been a... But it's, again, it's just more space. Like, the Weaver's pushing him bottom. He just got his BKB, and now he's got 2k gold. This tower's at a point where it's basically in deny range. And if they only send one hero here, he can maybe even get a kill if he feels ballsy enough. I don't blame him if uh, he wants to play safe, though. Yeah. Oh, my God. Call? <laughs> that would have been something. No, he had no idea, though. Good job. You, if he didn't use that Shikuchi as he tp that could have been something. I mean, I wonder if Axe would have actually seen him right there, but... Yeah, they need a single ward. Yeah, that would actually he, help here. Oh. He's been there so much in the time. By the way, they, they catch TA. That's big. What a sentry place. They saw me initially going to force out a PKP, but he's on the run, still in a bit of trouble. He has support coming in, though. So, yeah, he'll be good. But they forced the BKP, and that's already down to now seven seconds here at this point. So, that's a but good he use. He has Butterfly, and he is level 25, so... I don't really think they can exploit the BKB being down. Like, even without that, it's, uh, they don't jump him initially. This window's kind of like... They're just not in a position to capitalize on anything good that happens to them unless Mineski are, like, all dead, which isn't going to happen. I mentioned being level 25, he chose to get that plus 3 refraction, of course, so... Not much tougher to break through. I don't think there's through. even a choice in that. No. The, the refraction charges. There's so many of these level 25 talents. It's just it's so clear what you go for in 99.9% .9 of games. Seems like it, yeah. Like the Lena one as well. Like whoever came up with that as a decision was blatantly smoking something. <laughs> Tell me really how you feel. PQMZ. I mean, there is no decision. Like, one is broken on one side, and one is, like, eh, it's kind of nice, I suppose, <laughs> if you're a support, and, yeah. like, who gives a shit? Like, it's useless. There's, I, I feel like that the, there's several that are, that are somewhat niche, but, yeah, I mean, you're right, like, on the TA in this case, yeah, it's, it seems like that's always going to be, the, I mean, if it was more like, like, the Venom, like, a 60-second respawn, then yeah, maybe we have something, it would be but, a choice. yeah, 30 seconds seems so minimal. That it's Agreed. just not worth it. And, and the idea you're getting an ability that instead prevents you from dying seems more powerful. Anyways, BKB popped right there uh, preemptively. They're going to jump in the background. Is the Radiant side with the Sun on the Timbersaw as he goes in. The rupture is going off. The Lotus Worm not going to work too much right there. He goes down flood right in the midst. And they catch Weaver throughout that Shikuchi on through. Earth Spirit's going to maybe end up getting picked off over here. Yes, he will. But they're trying to finish off the sniper. They can't do it. Thought the Cooling Blade came out early. Yes, they will. Triple kill for Mushi, though. And they missed it. Make it an ultra kill. No rampage for him. But a three or a two for five exchange. As they clean up everyone, Gem is on the ground in the background, but they don't really care about that. They're going right for the base. They do have buyback, so, on key heroes. 
Uh, I don't think they mind necessarily though. The Bloodseeker still has Aegis and she has DKDs up in 20, so even with the buyback. Uh, okay, they, they can play it safe if they want. They don't uh, need to do anything silly. But I, I could have seen them getting the tier 3 if they felt ballsy. Yeah. Not I'm really surprised Coach went for that fight though, because with how well they dodged the previous Aegis, they were. Uh, in a better position to like defend the high ground against an Aegis than they are to take a chaotic fight where they have no vision around the area at all and are basically playing blind into a team that thrives on chaotic fights. Like if you're not able to focus down these heroes cleanly and like just disrupt the dazzle, it creates a uh, very good atmosphere for Manesky. Yeah. And it's just because their cores are so big right now, like TA is nearly doubling. Bloodseeker's huge. Him having Basher as well now just gives them another way to cancel the TPs and gives them more ways to keep on targets. Uh oh. He also took the rupture damage, by the way, which. I don't really know how good this talent is, but I've always taken the stats. As okay. close for bags, it makes sense. Yeah, get uh, more damage across on a couple heroes even. And really force that decision out of them as far as if they want to run or not. But Bloodseeker, he's baiting big time right here. <laughs> he has that BKP. Will There's they no fall for it? Though. Oh, now they he's by himself. Yeah, he's going to BKP and just run. And the rest, of, <laughs> look, they just immediately spread out. They're like, oh, crap, we got to get out. Oh, they get, they get a BKP and they will retreat. So, and minor victory there for Clutch. But big picture, Mineski. Still looking very good. Yeah, yeah. I mean that Roshan fight. It's it's just one of those unfortunate situations where clearly they were trying to time it where like right before Roshan was dead and maybe pick up the supporting cast and have a, a numbers advantage going into the fight, but it didn't work out that way. They the the Roshan died you right as they jumped. Yeah. It, it's like um, they they're still in the game. If the, that age just goes to Mineski, the they're, they're not out at all. Sure, they have to play really well, but so far they've been manipulating the map decently and they've been able to buy the time. I'm really surprised they, they yellowed so hard for it. It's going to be a catch here on a Weaver, by the way. The big yes, Berserker's so call hasn't been the best game for Axe so far, but you know what? He almost makes up for it right there as he goes in. There's no buyback on a Weaver. They know this. He bought back, remember, as they were pushing that Tier 3 tower last time. This is huge. 85 seconds. They have an opening Yeah, that can pick up might have just won them the game. This is a really nice attempt to at least delay some time and cut the creeps, but they don't care because they have creep movement. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, as close to game. Yeah. Unless you have to play, if the game's in their hands, if they throw this, I'll be amazed. <laughs> well, the, the, I mean, the 100% one racks right here for sure. It's just a matter of how much more do they get with it. Mushi's going to go in. There's the melee racks melting away. I mean, Mushi's getting low. He, he's, he doesn't have the Aegis, so he got to be a little careful here as a shallow grave is popped. And, and of course, I guess Sniper does make life difficult in terms of pushing into the base, and they're going to just settle with that, actually. Or he's going to heal up here. Up and trying to, like... Oh, wow. Axe going deep. They want the Sniper kill. He popped back. Remember, that's going to be a time. He will fall, and down he goes. For 90 seconds now, they catch Timbersaw on the background as well. The Basher procs coming out, the rupture on a Rubik on top of the Timbersaw. In comes the follow up stun as he tries to TP out. He's going to fall. GG, well played. And just like that, Mineski will be victorious there in game number one. So, yeah, you said that they, they really should have padded. And, well, they don't throw the, not only that, they played it very well in the finish. And they deserve that game one victory. Yeah, once they got their momentum rolling, it never really stopped. But, as I said, it was the nature of their draft. Clutch were uh, always behind once that happened, and they didn't really need to fight that second rush, I think. Obviously, the game looks horrible from their perspective at that point, and they probably feel pressured to do something. But the likelihood of them winning that fight is like, if you bet on that with like a tenner, you're probably coming away a millionaire. That's the odds against you, you know? That's how unlikely it is. So, yeah, I think they'll adjust their draft though, because with how Mineski played this game, they were always setting the tempo, and I think that's kind of the way SEA teams like to play the game. They don't like to be able to uh, 
uh, don't like to have to play their high ground defense and play from behind, which is why I think like the Bloodseeker was uh, actually really smart in the end. Not a I typical mean, pick, but yeah. it worked out. It definitely did. It proved to be an effective pickup as you're getting at, and uh, Mineski again uh, stopping a bit of momentum, you could say, of clutch gamers who we've been talking about going into this matchup. They've been looking so good lately in just general, not only this event, but the, again, qualifying for the Summit 7. But right now, Mineski is uh, starting to find a groove and looking good here now up one nothing over Clutch Gamers. So, ladies and gentlemen, sit tight. we got game number two coming up. I'm Breaky CPK, joined by PQMZ here on the broadcast. You're tuning into the Zodak Cup Masters Tournament, our Southeast Asian region qualifiers. Game number two going to be coming up next, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.